good to be back with you. Um, my name is Ben Carswell. I'm the National Director of Tertiary Students Christian Fellowship. And I believe I was with you, oh, I think about 18 months ago. So it's good to see some familiar faces, one or two of whom I've met in real life since we met virtually uh, some time ago. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you were on the last call uh, that we had with uh, TSCF. So forgive me if I repeat a, a bit of the information, um, but I've also got um, a friend and colleague with me tonight, and I'd love you particularly to pray for him and the work that he starts out in um, up in Auckland. So I'm based in Wellington. Uh, Josh, my colleague, is up in Auckland. But I thought I'd start by sharing a verse or two just from Scripture, from Colossians chapter 1. Uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory where Paul writes, he is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. And I don't know about you, but I suspect your situation is probably very similar to that of many Christians and many people, not just in Aotearoa, but around the world. At the moment, we're weary of all that's been going on in the world. Uh, the strain and stresses of COVID and isolation and lockdowns uh, has taken its toll. Uh, and perhaps we feel very weak and maybe at times feeble, but it's a reminder that yeah, we may strenuously contend with limited energy, but it's Christ powerfully working in each of us. And ultimately, he's the one that we're proclaiming. He's the one that we're telling people about, teaching about, um, so that we might present everyone fully mature in him. Christ in you, the hope of glory. TSCF, Tertiary Students Christian Fellowship, has been around for 86 years. I've not been around for all of them. Uh, you'll be pleased to know. Uh, we work on um, campuses, historically, I would say, uh, but now online as well, uh, seeking to reach students for Christ and to change students for life. So we work in the polytechs, the universities, and we would like to work in the Wananga around the country Wherever there are students out of high school in the tertiary institutions, we want them to hear of Jesus, to turn to him and to trust in him. We work with student groups. They're led by students. And sometimes I get asked, how are you different from some of the other student groups, Christian student groups? There are one of the differences that all our groups are student led, uh, supported by staff like myself and Josh, but led by students because we believe students are best placed to reach fellow students with the good news of Jesus. And uh, so we've got student groups from Massey, Albany up in the north, right down to Otago, uh, down in the south. And right between each of the universities, we've got groups on not every campus, um, uh, and not every Polytech campus. We would love to see more groups uh, develop, but small but vibrant groups of students seeking to bear witness to all that Jesus has done uh, with those around them. We have four aims that we talk with the students about true witness. We want to help students be authentic witnesses to who Jesus is. And I think one of the real thrills of the last couple of years, despite it being challenging, has been to see a steady um, but unspectacular stream uh, of students come to faith in Jesus. I suppose everyone coming to Christ is a spectacular conversion. It may not hit the headlines, but we want to see students coming to know Jesus and trust in him, true witness. We want to see students living undivided lives, having lives that are sold out for Christ. So they're, they're not just Christians on Sunday or when they're with Christian friends, but Christians living out the gospel 24-7, 365. We want Christian students to have deep thought, uh, to be thinking deeply about their faith, to be growing in their faith. I think one of the challenges in the church in New Zealand today is that very often we keep people at a Sunday school level of their faith. We've got lots of students studying uh, 
rock, rocket science, uh, brain surgery, those kinds of things. And we want them to be thinking deeply about their faith at the same sort of level and thinking, how do those things apply? How, how does the gospel apply to those uh, academic subjects to make a difference in their lives? So true witness, undivided life, deep thought, and then global reach, probably the aim that has taken the biggest uh, hit in recent times. But we still believe that the gospel is for the whole world. And that's not just about people coming into New Zealand, international students, and we're looking forward to their return, but also sending people out into all the world, to the ends of the earth, uh, to share the good news of Jesus. So four, four simple aims, true witness, undivided life, deep thought, and global reach. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll share some uh, specific prayer requests uh, for TSCF around New Zealand. But if you want to know what TSCF is about, probably one of the best examples I can give to you is my friend Josh, who I first met uh, just over 10 years ago as a student uh, in Wellington. Josh, uh, kia ora, welcome. Um, I wonder if you could tell us about what you were like when you first arrived at Victoria University in Wellington. Got everyone. What was I like when I first met you? Um, I was pretty new on the scene um, in, in more ways than one. Um, not only was I a first year student, um, I was wrestling with my faith as a young adult really for the first time. Um, a bit of background, I, I'm a Wellington boy. Um, my dad was a Baptist pastor. His name was Michael Irving. Mike, most, most people called him. Um, but when he was 38 uh, and I was six, he, he died quite suddenly. Um, and tragically by suicide. And uh, between the age of uh, six and, and when I showed up at the, the TSCF group uh, at Victoria, I didn't have a whole lot of, of faith community or, or input, um, though mum remained really faithful and praying for us and modelling the faith as she could. Um, you can imagine losing her husband um, and, and um, someone who was so involved in the church, leading our church down in Miramar and Wellington. Um, that she took a big hit. So um, it was a, a really mixed experience for me, church life and, and faith things. Um, and going to university, I, I didn't really feel I had much context um, or much interest uh, in, in, in things of faith. Um, that's a much longer story, of course, but let's, let's speed it up a little. Um, I, I got to the orientation day, the club's day at Victoria University. I, I was there only to get my student ID card and I saw the Christian Union uh, stall. It was probably hand painted. Uh, there wasn't anything particularly flash. I think they were offering free sausages. Um, but um, more than anything, I just thought, oh, I, I should really give some thought to that stuff. You know, dad, dad was a pastor, mum's a Christian. Um, and I'm at university away from um, any expectation of someone telling me I've got to go to youth group. Um, I'll just go and um, I... Uh, I said I'd go to their Bible study um, after the free sausage. And uh, I did go. I was in the library. There were three other students. Um, they opened Luke's gospel. And it was really the first time that I'd had the Bible open, people um, genuinely interested in what it had to say, and asking me gently, but you know, really asking me, what do you believe about this stuff, Josh? And at first, I didn't really know. But about three weeks later, and then three months later, I had this incredible conviction that, that Christ really rose from the dead, and that would change everything about my life and my future. Um, it surfaced a lot about my past as well, as you can imagine. Um, so there were significant times. Um, but I came to faith, um, found a church and was baptized. And uh, I met Ben um, somewhere probably in the, the that first three months. Um, Maybe, maybe even a little after that, um, but I, I became involved in the wider group, not just the Bible study, but uh, the, the campus group at Victoria, um, and eventually as a, as a student leader and a, a board rep, and um, threw myself at, at student mission because I'd, I'd been on the receiving end. Um, I was energized to share my, my new faith and my growing faith. Um, ben um, was one of the people who met with me regularly 
and and was one of the people asking me what do you believe about these things and never too quick to answer for me you know I felt it was space and and time and encouragement to think for myself and and um, apply what I was learning to my context and and with other students um, so um, it was a, a significant ministry in my own life um, and one that what 12 years 13 years later Ben I think it is um, I've, I've returned to um, and, and, and really delighted to be back in the fold. What are, what are some of the differences that being involved with TSEF made in your life? How did it shape who you are today? Hmm. I think the, the, the biggest thing was that I, I found faith could permeate all aspects of life. It wasn't um, just a lifestyle choice. Um, uh, it wasn't just a, a Sunday commitment, of course, but there was something about TSCF that was um, integrating my faith in my studies and in my vocation. I, I was a high school teacher for six years, and and when I first met Ben, I was on track for that. And I heard from TSCF that I could worship God and serve Jesus as a high school teacher in a secular school and be on mission. Um, and that that was um, a huge shift in my thinking around what what it meant to be a Christian um, or to serve God. Um, I I I found as I became more aware of my own sin, um, I, I found uh, an amazing peace in God's forgiveness. Um, as I became more aware of my own grief, uh, as I look back on my the loss of my dad and the the. Um, the strain that that has been through some of my my Christian life, um, I felt tremendous peace there too. Um, but TSCF uh, has also taken me um, talk about global reach, Ben, um, taking me to different parts of the world. Um, my my wife is from Singapore originally, and we've lived there. Um, I was um, really moved to be part of the the World Assembly, the IFES International Fellowship of Evangelical Students World Assembly with. 150 countries represented, including in 2011 South Sudan, which had only been a country for a for a, a, a few months, I think, at that stage. Um, getting a glimpse of God's church, um, the global church, um, TSCF um, has helped um, put that into focus for me and given me a heart for people's close to home and far from home. Yeah, you met your wife through TSCF, and um, that's not one of the answered prayers that we were looking for, but <laughs> we are delighted to have that um, story. Josh, um, as he says, um, has been a TSCF student, has seen the impact for himself. You've been teaching both in Auckland and then in Singapore. You've done some theological study, but now, uh, this earlier this year, you've started as team leader uh, in Auckland. Do you want to just tell us a few of the things that you think that's going to involve and a few of the things that we could pray for for you as you start on that? Sure. And start is the, the word. I'm, I'm, I'm barely, barely here. Um, I've had three months of just raising my support and, and um, reconnecting with many friends who I'm praying will stand with me um, financially as, as I need to um, fund my role before I can start fully in it. Um, but, but prayerfully... Um, so that um, the, the partnerships come in from um, the whole team, um, not just those in Auckland, but those um, uh, around the world who I'm connected with. Um, so I, I suppose I, I need those, those practical needs met before I can be fully working with students. Um, but as and when I, I am, uh, there are 10 student groups across uh, five campuses that, um, that TSCF oversees. Um, there are only uh, two full-time um, staff besides me and, and six um, very part-time volunteers. Um, so for those 10 student groups across five campuses, that leaves us pretty stretched. Um, my mandate, I suppose, is, is to grow the team so that we can grow the work. Um, so if you could pray for uh, others who are willing, um, whether part-time volunteers or um, those raising support to work um, full-time alongside me. If you'd pray that others come forward, um, that's a big one. Um, but then, of course, for those who are already here working, um, particularly Robin, uh, the current Auckland team leader, uh, we need some wisdom as students return 
uh, to campuses uh, in person. Um, and even for those who choose not to, having been so used to online learning the last few, few years, um, we need wisdom in how to care for both of those groups, whether in person or online. Um, and the fact there'll be a mismatch um, for a while and maybe just a hybrid um, bit of online and, and in person alongside each other going forward, um, navigating yeah, a big transition for these students returning. Um, Great. Those would be the big ones for a start. Thanks very much. Now, I've learned as I worked uh, or work with students in education, sometimes you have to keep it simple for people. So this is the simple bit. Um, if, if you're the sort of person that forgets, what was I supposed to pray for? What are all the things that I was supposed to pray for? Let me keep it simple. Can I ask you to pray for Josh and uh, his wife, Kate, uh, but Josh and Kate, as they start out in ministry together, over 100,000 students in Auckland University. We've got two uh, staff uh, working now across the city and a, a group of volunteers. But pray that God would uh, use Josh in particular as he starts out in this. Um, he's been very um, gracious in the way that he's uh, spoken about this, but I, I can be a bit more blunt. As Josh continues to uh, raise financial support and prayer support, would you pray that God would provide for the needs that they have there financially, but also in prayer? And I'm going to make a suggestion here. I've just clicked up Josh's email in the chat. If you want to get Josh's regular prayer updates, I've been getting them. They're superb. Uh, flick him an email or send him a message in the chat if you want another way of chatting. But um, it's a lot easier to do that uh, advocating for someone else. I have seen the change in Josh's life uh, through encountering Jesus and Jesus transforming him. And our prayer is that that would happen with many others too. Across the country, we've got a few things that we would love you to pray for. It's been increasingly challenging trying to connect with students as many haven't returned to classes. Uh, many are still online. Orientation weeks are still taking place in some parts of the country. Uh, so it's really had a huge impact on the student groups across the country. So you could pray that we'd be able to find students who are searching, uh, but also for uh, us to find Christian students who we can encourage and help uh, to share their faith with others. In a few weeks time, we're going to be having our National Conference Summit uh, being held down in Queenstown. We're hopeful that it'll all be able to go ahead and that isolation and COVID uh, don't have too much of an effect. But you could pray for that. It'll just be the second time uh, in the last few years that we've been able to gather together. Talked about Auckland already. Uh, we would love to see more workers joining uh, Josh and Kate and Robin, the existing uh, staff member. So you could pray for uh, the team in Auckland. But we've also been advertising uh, through the Christian Network, New Zealand Christian Network online uh, for a few different positions. Uh, we're in particular need for a communications manager. So maybe you could pray for it. Maybe you know someone. Maybe you're the person um, that we've been looking for. Would you pray that God would provide for those three different positions, communications manager, administrator, and finance assistant? Uh, I'm always reminded when we pray for workers that it is a biblical request that Christ commanded us to pray for, ask the Lord of the harvest to, to send out laborers into uh, the harvest field. One of the things that we have done this past year is we have built a, a house directly across the road from Lincoln University. God has provided remarkably for it, and uh, we have nine residents uh, in that house using it as a base for outreach and discipleship at Lincoln University down in Canterbury. You could pray for it. It's called The Well uh, on Springs Road. Pray that students would encounter uh, and meet Jesus. Uh, in the well. And then Minty, we have a discipleship training year. We're just about to recruit uh, next year's intake of uh, what we call minterns, our interns for the year. And um, pray that God would uh, challenge some young people to join us for a year of discipleship and the fruit would be seen um, in the years ahead. So there's a few things, but if you forget all of that, the simple prayer request 
is Josh and Kate starting out their work in Auckland. Corey, I think I've used up pretty much all my time. Uh, so there's a brief snapshot of who TSCF is and how you can pray for the work. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you.